Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platform in Unity. In this video, we're going to add in a feature that's going to allow our little frog enemy to patrol back and forth in our game. Let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two empty game objects. We're going to right click, then we go down to create empty, and we're going to call the first one waypoint right. And then we're going to create another one. And it's going to be called waypoint left. And, and make sure these are, oops, let me just fix that. Left. All right. And make sure these aren't children of the frog. Make sure these are separate game objects. They're their own thing. And then I'm going to hit this right here. And I'm going to click on waypoint right. And here's my empty game object, and I'm just going to move it down right now to right about there. And then for waypoint left, I'm going to move it here to the end of the platform. And I'm going to move my frog, make him a little more centered to these two points right here. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And basically what these are going to do, these are going to give the, the bounds that our frog is going to go between he's going to walk over here and then he's going to walk over there and this is going to be his sort of patrol area that he's going to use so next we're going to go into our scripts we're going to create a new script we're going to right click go up to create oops go to c sharp script and i'm going to call this ninja frog then we're going to go ahead and open our script actually it'll open right up for us Give it a minute to load. And right up here, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create another serialized field because we're going to create two floats. And it's going to be private float. And the first one is going to be called left cap. And then let's just create a little room here. And then I'm going to Control C to copy, go to the next line, Control V to print, and I'm just going to change this to right cap. And so these are going to be the maximum distances that our frog can move. So we're going to hit save. Apparently I need an update. Then we're going to let this load. And there's no errors, and so I'm going to go back over to my frog, and I'm going to add this script to him. And as you can see here, the left cap and right cap are right here. And but what I want is for to know what the distance is. So right here, if you look, the right cap is actually excuse me, the right cap, oh, I'm sorry, this is the left cap, but actually these are on the wrong side. Let's, let's fix this. So this is on right and left. So this is, this is the right, sorry about this. Click on this guy and then he goes to the left. All right. So back to our script, sorry for the confusion. So the left cap, which is this one, the position of it is 8.42. So we're simply going to copy and paste this to our script down here. Just hit control V and that way it's at the, uh, it's placed here. And then if we need to, we'll adjust it. And then we're going to go back to our right one and it's at 17.74 and we're going to copy go back to ninja frog and then we're going to go ahead and paste that in there and we'll just save that so next we're going to go back into our script and we're going to create a couple more variables here control c go to the next line and actually we'll make a little space and we're going to create one called actually Gonna to want to print that and we're gonna change this to jump left. 
I'm sorry, not jump left, jump length. Because we want to give a little bit of length to how far he's going to go. I'm going to control V and then race this. And we're going to put jump height. So we're going to we're going to put a variable to how far he's going to jump and how high he's going to jump between our two waypoints. And after that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a private bool. And remember, bool is about things being true or things being false. And we're going to call this facing right. And the reason why we're doing, I'm sorry, facing right is equal to true. And so the reason why we're doing this is that if we go back here and we look, he's already facing right. So we want to create a parameter for him to turn the other way. So when the game is on, he's already facing right, and that's going to equal true. And then we're going to create a parameter in which, uh, you know, something can be, excuse me, something can be declared false, and then we're going to face him in the other direction. So actually, let's let's change this a bit. Instead of facing right, let's put facing left equals true. And go back into Unity here. And if you scroll up to the sprite renderer here, if we click on our ninja frog, you'll see this flip X and Y. Click on X and he'll go in the other direction. Same thing with Y if I haven't pointed that earlier. If you click this Y, I can flip the sprite in the Y direction like that and just flip them upside down. So have him face left so that he'll be facing our character. So then we're going to go over back to our script and we're gonna add a few more things. We're going to add a, another serialized field here, only this time it's gonna be a layer mask. Copy. Just paste this in here and we're going to change this to a layer mask. And I also spelled height wrong. We'll fix that in a second. Layer mask. And we're going to call this ground. And this is just like uh, when we did our player controller, we had a layer mask called ground. And that was just to label the ground so the player knew he was on it. Let's fix the word height so we don't make any errors later. Spelling has defeated me before. And now we have to add a couple more things. We're going to add a private collider 2D. And we're going to call it COOL. All this should be familiar from the player script. We, we've done this before. And a private rigid body 2D. And we're just going to call that like the last one RB. And we're all set there. So now in our start function, we're going to go ahead and get our components when we start the game. So we're going to put COLL, our, our collider 2D, and we're going to put get component, the lesser than sign, Collider 2D, so we know what we're getting. A parentheses, end, and a semicolon. And then on the next line, we're going to do the same for our rigid body. Get component, rigid body, 2D. Make sure it's capitalized and parentheses and semicolon and this is the same as the player controller also a lot of this should be familiar where we went and did the get component function so that we when the game starts it will get those components for our script and now down here what we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement called i'm sorry an if statement where the parameter is facing left and then we're going to put in our brackets we're going to give ourselves some space because we're going to put a pretty good deal of code in here and then we're going to create an else statement at the end of it and in it we're going to put if facing right and so this way 
we're going to have two different things here based on our bool. What's going to happen if we're facing left and what's going to happen if we're facing right. Actually, I'm wrong. We're not going to put an if facing right in there. It's obviously just if facing left or else, which is if facing right. So in here, we're going to put an if transform dot position dot x is greater than our left cap. And at the end here, we're going to put a bracket. We're going to give ourselves some space. We're going to be putting some code in there. So if transform.position.x is greater than the left cap, and just going back to here, we go to our frog. We put a left cap and a right cap. So the left cap is over here at 8.42. If I click on this. So if the position of the frog is greater than 8.42, then we want this to happen. So the first thing is that if transform dot local scale, and I'll explain this in a second, dot x does not equal one, and then a bracket, and inside this bracket, we want transform dot local scale dot I'm sorry it's going to equal a new vector three and that is going to equal to one comma one comma one all right let's figure out what's going on. actually we have to fix this here transform dot local scale dot x does not equal one and no, I don't I don't need a free one of those right now. So, all right, so if the transform.position.x is greater than the left cap, i.e. we're further than that, that mark we made, then, and if our transform.localScale.x does not equal one, so if we're to the left of something, we're gonna be negative one, but if we're to the right of it we're going to be one so we're saying if we're not if we're not i'm sorry if we're not to the right then we want to change ourselves to the left we want to we want to we want to face the other direction and then the direction we want to face is going to be one one and one which is basically this is our x component our y component our z component so if we're facing in the other direction then we want to turn around and face the other direction. We're just telling ourselves to turn around, essentially. So then another if statement. And the parameter for this is going to be our collider dot is touching layers. And that layers is ground. Then our RB dot velocity is going to equal a new vector two. And that vector two is going to be our negative jump length, comma, jump height. It's a good thing I recognize that I spelt that wrong up there because I probably would have spelt it right down here. And then this would have been a would have been an error and a semicolon at the end. So let's just space this out to, to just view it a little better. So just to explain this in one big um, one one big explanation, you know, if we're facing left and if our transform.position.x, our, our position in the x plane is greater than the left cap, if we're, we're to the right of it, then we want to ask ourselves two other things that if we are not facing right, then we want to face left. So let me just go by this. So click on our frog. So if I were to flip this back, then we're facing right. And then that is, that's not one. So then if it's, if we're not facing right, then we want to turn ourselves around and face the left. That's, that's what this, 
this is saying right here. So then if we are, if we have turn ourselves around and if we're touching the ground, then we want to jump to the left. So we basically want to make sure we face left and that we jump left. That's, that's the, the big picture of that piece of code right there. And then at the end of this, we want to add an else right here. And then we want to say facing left is going to equal false. So if we're facing the right direction and then jumping in the right direction, that's what we want to do. And if we're not doing that, then we want to turn around the other way. That's that's basically when we say the else facing left equals false. We we want to say we want to turn around and go the other direction. So now that we're done that, we're going to go down to this portion of the statement. And now we want to do it to the opposite way. And basically how we're going to do that is we're going to just cut and paste this or copy and paste it down here. Only we're just going to change everything to the opposite. So instead of greater than, we want less than the right cap. And then instead of the transform that position not being equal to one, we want it not equal to negative one. And then we want to make this negative. And then we want to make this one positive. So let's just take a look here. And then our facing left is going to be equal to true. So it's just the opposite. So if we're less than the right cap, if we're to the left of that marker, which actually I should have explained this earlier, those two markers were just references. I'm going to be those waypoints. We're going to be deleting them because we're not going to need them. I just needed them to be able to mark a location so I could see where to place my parameters for the frogs jumping. So anyway, if we're if we're to the left of our where we marked uh, our cap, then if we're not facing left, then we want to be moving in the opposite direction. Actually, and sorry. Oh, actually, that's right. That should be negative right there. And then we're going to be facing the other direction, and then we're going to be jumping in the direction we want. And if not, facing left equals true. We're going to turn around the other way. So let's hit save and see how this all turned out. Actually, before we do that, let's go back up here and let's just add in some values for our length and height of this. We'll just add two. We'll hit save and we'll go back into Unity. And let's see, we have no errors here. This is good. And over here, freeze position right here in, in our frog. Let's click on them to make sure we're all in the same spot. Here's our ninja frog. And in our rigid body earlier, I froze our position on the X and Y axis. So unfreeze those, but freeze the Z rotation so that he doesn't spin around. And then down here, we have our ground, our layer mask. Make sure to click that and put ground. And now let's hit play. And let's go to the scene here. And now, now our, our enemy, our AI, he's just patrolling the area. He's going back and forth. He goes this way, he goes to where the spot is. Then when he hits it, he turns around and then he goes the other way, exactly as we wanted. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. All links are in the description below. See you next time.